Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cody Data Podcast. I'm your host, Kieran, and today we're diving into a topic that's crucial for any company looking to stay competitive in the digital age, how to drive a data-driven culture in your organization. Whether you're leading a small startup or managing a team in a large corporation, building a data-driven culture isn't just about implementing the right tools or hiring data experts. It's about fostering a mindset across your entire organization that values data as a critical asset for decision making. Today, I'll take you through the steps to create and sustain this culture and share insights from real world examples to inspire your journey. Before we dive into the how, let's talk about the why. Why is a data-driven culture so important? In today's business environment, Decisions can no longer be based on gut feeling or intuition alone. Data-driven companies are 23 times more likely to acquire customers, six times as likely to retain customers, and 19 times as likely to be profitable, according to a McKinsey Global Institute report. These stats aren't just buzzwords. They reflect a fundamental shift in how businesses operate. But beyond the numbers, a data-driven culture helps in several key areas. For one, it leads to better decision making. When data is at the core of your decisions, it minimizes biases and leads to more accurate and effective outcomes. It's like having a compass in the wilderness. You're less likely to get lost and more likely to reach your destination efficiently. There's also the matter of accountability. Data brings transparency. Teams can see the impact of their work in real time and adjust their strategies accordingly. This visibility encourages responsibility because everyone's contributions, or lack thereof, are laid bare by the numbers. And let's not forget about continuous improvement. A data-driven approach encourages a mindset of constant learning and iteration. When decisions are backed by data, it's easier to identify what's working and what's not, leading to an ongoing cycle of refinement and progress. Finally, fostering innovation is another critical benefit. With the right data, companies can identify new opportunities, understand customer needs more deeply, and innovate faster than the competition. When you build a culture that thrives on data, you're setting your company up to be a leader, not a follower. Building a data-driven culture is not just about technology, it's about changing the way people think and act in your organization. So how do you get there? Let's break it down. The first step in driving a data-driven culture is ensuring that the leadership team is fully on board. Without the commitment from the top, it's challenging to embed data-driven thinking into the fabric of the organization. Leadership buy-in is essential. To build a data-driven culture, your leadership must be the biggest advocates of using data in decision-making. This means not only talking the talk, but walking the walk. Leaders should use data in their own decision-making processes, set expectations for others to do the same, and communicate the importance of data across the company. Take, for example, Jeff Bezos, CEO of Amazon. From the early days of the company, Bezos has pushed for data-driven decisions. Amazon's culture emphasizes the importance of data at every level, and this has been a significant factor in its success When your leadership consistently demonstrates a reliance on data, it sets a powerful example for the rest of the organization. But leadership buy-in is just the beginning. Creating a vision is equally crucial. Leadership should articulate a clear vision of what a data-driven culture looks like. This vision needs to be communicated clearly and consistently across all levels of the organization. It should highlight how data can help the company achieve its strategic goals and why every team member's participation is critical. A great example of this is how Satya Nadella transformed Microsoft's culture when he took over as CEO. He set a clear vision of a data-driven, cloud-first company and aligned the entire organization around this vision. The result? Microsoft became one of the world's most valuable companies, thriving on data and innovation. All right, now that we've talked about leadership and vision, let's move on to the next critical component, empowering your teams with data literacy. 
To create a data-driven culture, everyone in your organization, not just the data scientists, needs to be comfortable working with data. This means investing in data literacy. Data literacy is the ability to read, understand, create, and communicate data as information. It's not just about knowing how to crunch numbers. It's about understanding what those numbers mean and how they can inform decisions. So we need to assess the current level of data literacy within your organization. Are your teams comfortable interpreting data? Do they understand the basics of data analysis? Or are they relying heavily on a few data experts? Once you have a sense of where your organization stands, you can start developing training programs tailored to different roles. For example, marketing teams might need to understand how to interpret customer data to optimize campaigns, while product managers might focus on using data to guide feature development. Providing role-specific training ensures that everyone in the company can leverage data in a way that's relevant to their work. But training alone isn't enough. You also need to create opportunities for teams to practice their data skills. Encourage the use of data in everyday decision making by providing easy access to the data they need. Tools like dashboards and data visualization software can help make data more accessible and less intimidating. A company that's done this well is Google. Google's internal culture is highly data-driven, but it didn't happen overnight. They've invested heavily in tools and training to ensure that everyone from engineers to HR can use data effectively in their roles. This approach has enabled them to maintain a high level of innovation and agility. So by making data literacy a priority and ensuring that your teams have the tools and training they need, you empower them to make data-driven decisions. This is a key step in building a data-driven culture that permeates every level of your organization. So now we've covered leadership, vision, and data literacy. Let's talk about infrastructure. Having the right infrastructure in place is crucial for supporting a data-driven culture. Infrastructure in this context refers to the tools, technologies, and processes that enable data to flow smoothly through your organization. It's about making sure that data is not only available, but also accessible, accurate, and actionable. The first step in building this infrastructure is ensuring that your data is centralized and easily accessible. This means breaking down silos and creating a single source of truth where all your data is stored and can be accessed by those who need it. Whether it's a data warehouse, a data lake, or a cloud-based solution, the key is to have a system that consolidates your data in one place. For example, at Airbnb, the company built a robust data infrastructure that allows data from various sources like customer bookings, host feedback, and website traffic to be consolidated and analyzed in real time. This centralized system enables teams across the company to access the data they need to make informed decisions quickly. But Centralization is just one part of the equation. You also need to invest in the right tools and technologies to analyze and visualize this data. Tools like Tableau, Power BI, and Looker can help teams create dashboards that provide insights at a glance. These tools should be user-friendly enough that non-technical users can still leverage them effectively. In addition to tools, establishing clear processes for data governance is essential this includes setting standards for data quality, ensuring data privacy and security, and defining who has access to what data. Good data governance ensures that your data remains reliable and that your teams can trust the insights they're working with. For instance, IBM has a strong data governance framework that ensures data integrity and security across its global operations. This governance is critical for maintaining the trust of both employees and customers in their data-driven decisions. So building the right infrastructure is about more than just having the latest technology. It's about creating an ecosystem where data is easily accessible, properly governed, and ready to be used to drive decisions across the organization. All right, we've discussed leadership, vision, data literacy, and infrastructure. Now, let's talk about the human side of driving a data-driven culture. 
Having the right tools and processes in place is important, but it's the mindset of your employees that will ultimately determine whether your data-driven culture takes root. This mindset is about more than just using data. It's about believing in the value of data and trusting it as a key component of decision making. To foster this mindset, start by celebrating data-driven successes. When a team makes a decision based on data that leads to a positive outcome, make sure it's recognized across the organization. This not only reinforces the value of using data, but also encourages others to follow suit. For example, Netflix has a culture of celebrating data-driven decision-making. They use data extensively to inform content creation, marketing strategies, and user experience improvements. When a data-driven decision leads to a hit show or a successful feature, it's highlighted internally as a win, reinforcing the importance of data in their culture. Another way to encourage a data-driven mindset is to promote experimentation. Encourage teams to use data to test hypotheses and try new approaches. When people feel safe to experiment and learn from data, they're more likely to embrace a data-driven approach. This also creates a culture of continuous improvement where decisions are iterated and refined based on data. Finally, make data a part of everyday conversations. In meetings, discussions should be grounded in data wherever possible. When someone makes a claim or suggestion, ask them to back it up with data. Over time, this practice will become second nature and data-driven thinking will become embedded in the culture. Procter & Gamble, for instance, P&G has a culture where data is integral to decision-making. Whether it's in marketing, supply chain management, or product development, discussions are always rooted in data. This approach has helped P&G remain competitive in a fast-changing market. So by celebrating successes, promoting experimentation, and making data a part of daily conversations, you can cultivate a data-driven mindset throughout your organization. As we wrap up, it's important to acknowledge that building a data-driven culture isn't without its challenges. But with the right strategies, these challenges can be overcome. One of the biggest challenges is resistance to change. Not everyone in your organization may be comfortable with the shift to a data-driven approach. Some might feel threatened by the transparency that Delta brings, while others may be skeptical of relying on data over intuition. To address this, communication is key. Clearly explain the benefits of a data-driven culture and how it aligns with the company's overall goals. Provide support and training to help employees feel more comfortable and confident in using data. And be patient. Change takes time. Another challenge is ensuring data quality. If your data is inaccurate or incomplete, it can lead to mistrust in the data and poor decision making. That's why investing in data governance and quality assurance is critical from the start. Sustaining a data-driven culture also requires ongoing effort. It's not a one-time initiative, but a continuous process of improvement and reinforcement. Regularly review your data processes, tools, and strategies to ensure they're still meeting the needs of the organization. Keep the conversation about data alive through training, workshops, and leadership reinforcement. Finally, measure your progress. Use metrics to track how well your organization is adopting data-driven practices. Look at things like the number of data-driven decisions made, the usage of data tools, and the outcomes of data-driven projects. These metrics can help you identify areas for improvement and keep the momentum going. Remember, the goal is to create a culture where data is embedded in the DNA of your organization. It's not an overnight transformation, but with persistence and the right strategies, it's absolutely achievable. That's it for today's episode. We've covered a lot of ground on how to drive a data-driven culture in your organization, from getting leadership buy-in and creating a vision, to empowering teams with data literacy, building the right infrastructure, encouraging a data-driven mindset, and overcoming challenges. Building a data-driven culture is a journey, not a destination. But by taking these steps, you'll be well on your way to creating an environment where data drives decisions, sparks innovation, and propels your business forward. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, 
and share it with your network. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future episodes, feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email. Until next time, keep unleashing the power of data.